Okay, we're back here inside theCUBE at Oracle Open World. This is SiliconAngle.com's flagship program. We're out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. It's a special spotlight sponsored by Fusion IO, one of the great supporters of theCUBE that allows us to bring our great independent coverage to wall-to-wall -wall exclusive interviews with all the thought leaders, experts, CEOs, alpha geeks, and uh, we love it, and we want to thank Fusion IO for that. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon, Wikibon.org, and we're here with Brian Bulkowski who's the founder and CTO of Aerospike, new type of database company. Brian, welcome to theCUBE. Hi Dave, glad to be here. So, it's where all the action is, John. Yeah, is yeah, we, the, yeah we all know <laughs> each other around Silicon Valley, yeah. he's making it happen. So first, give us the update on the company, right? So Citrus Leaf was the old name, Aerospike's the new name for the folks out there. Introduce them to the new company name and update on what's happening with you guys. Absolutely, so we founded the company four years ago as one of the fastest databases in the world. We focus on commodity hardware and especially on flash storage. Uh, it's a special focus of ours, realizing that uh, companies like Oracle had great technology with rotational drive and the world was going to switch to flash and DRAM and the time had come for a new database. So uh, we've been selling our database primarily in the fastest, most scalable platforms in the world, which are mostly advertising platforms. Uh, these are folks who are doing uh, 10 to 20 billion impressions per month. We've had no downtime with any of our customers, and we can usually solve, with flash storage, uh, multi-terabyte systems, billions and billions of rows, often for user tracking and user information, personalization of advertising and experiences. So uh, we've gone last year from um, a great revenue year into this year, um, more sales, more customers. So I got to say that I've, I've known these guys for uh, a couple of years since they've been working on a great company. Brian is being humble, uh, he knows what he's doing. He saw the stuff, Flash stuff early. So I want to say congratulations, uh, great to have you on theCUBE. So I want to ask you, what did you guys see early on that you wanted to tackle? So when you, when you started the company, Citrus Leaf at the time, and now Aerospike, what was the big thing you wanted to focus in on for the company? Sure, John, so what I saw was companies that were being strangled by scale. I was at a Kleiner-backed company and they were trying to cover 5% of all, in, all the internet traffic in the world. They were trying to build dynamic recommendations on websites, great dream, and they were using sharded MySQL, which was the style of scalability at the time. And they found that to be a really difficult chore. They had outages, the moments when they needed to scale most and needed to absorb the most traffic, those were the moments that they were down. And I said, you know what, there's got to be a way for the highest levels of scale because the entire world is going to be moving to more and more scale, more and more data. And big data, Hadoop was already upon us. Analytics, business intelligence, that was a train that was already had a lot of velocity and a lot of momentum. But transactions, fast transactions, that was an area where there was going to be a lot of growth in the future. And especially with Flash, frankly. I said, well, you know, it's all about multi-core and distributed systems, but how that works together with Flash is what the next revolution in databases will be. Well, it turns out it absolutely happened. So let's take us to today. Um, in terms of your current situation, how big is the company and what's the big product news? So we've had Citrus Leaf, uh, <laughs> that's the old name. <laughs> we've had Aerospike 2.0 out for uh, nearly two and a half years in production uh, with about uh, several dozen customers. Again, a few at the highest levels of scale in the advertising industry and also small customers. So folks with really big dreams who want to grow and don't want to fool around with some open source solutions. Um, so uh, we've been expanding, continuing to uh, conquer within the advertising world. Uh, companies such as Exalate, um, great customer of ours that we announced uh, a little while ago. Um, but especially data management platforms, the guys who are, okay, maybe it's a little creepy, but they're taking all the yeah, yeah. data about everyone on the internet and they're analyzing that and then feeding back out and syndicating all of that. So every single person all the time, millions of transactions per second, and they have to be up all the time. We've never had an outage. Brian, we've heard a lot this week, you know, it's only Monday, we heard a lot from Oracle about Flash. You know, I always joke, like they invented it. Um, so, but you had said you founded the company because you saw that the sort of traditional systems, disk-based systems, weren't going to cut it. Um, so, as an observer, you listen to Oracle's messaging, sounds like they've hopped right in the bandwagon. What's different with well, what you do? We built our system from the ground up to be flash oriented. Um, we work with main memory and we also work with flash memory. And uh, we don't really support rotational disk at all anymore. 
Uh, we use it as a rotate as a backup store, as a warehouse ty style technology. Um, that's where we keep things like transaction logs in the database. Um, but we don't serve from it anymore. And that's been true for years in our product. And that's why we can achieve things like uh, recent blog post, uh, one million transactions per second per server out of main memory DRAM. And that's for a you know, several thousand dollar server, nothing fancy. What we showed with Fusion IO with their new native interface at the demo conference a few months ago was 400,000 transactions per second on a single fairly modest server with Fusion IO hardware and their special native interfaces. But this is in a clustered environment. We've had, I've had customers come to me, guys in um, uh, doing something new and exciting. They, they say, um, my business only works if I can do two million transactions a second, but I need to do it reliably and I need to do it with only a few servers. Can you help? Because there's no other way to do it. And um, you know, I'd, I'll, I'll be interested to see what some of Oracle's claims are, but we've had that kind of technology for a few years now, <laughs> and we've had it in production. It's a hardened solution. So you're essentially saying, if it's on spinning disk, you don't want to access it. Not it's really. It's going to be too slow. No. So every, all, all active data will be on flash, and, and that's really the fundamental architecture. Exactly, and the main change is, when you think of users, they behave irrationally. They're hard to predict. That's the whole point of users. They do all kinds of things. So you can't use caching technologies. You can't uh, assume that the most recent users will be the most recent users a few minutes from now. And so, um, and the, the analytics you do, it might not be on any particular pattern. So the typical tiered storage approaches, um, frankly, have a lot of trouble. So we said um, a better technology, looking at flash and looking at distributed systems, is one where you just have one database, no cache. So our system is as, flat, as fast as cache you put in front of a database, but you can build 10, 20, 100 terabyte systems with flash storage, cost effective way, reduce the uh, complexity of your architecture. No database caches, what a, what a pleasant world. Can you explain why that's such a much more pleasant world and what the drawbacks of a database cache are for our audience? Sure, uh, cache, data, cache systems, um, you have to warm them up. You don't know what's in them. Um, when a cache, you have to arrange consistency between them. Uh, when you have a cached here, well, usually you think of a cached here and you say, well, that, that's okay if that's unreliable. It's okay if that goes down. Well, that's not true. Because if, if you didn't need it, you wouldn't have put it there in the first place. So instead of having a cached here that you have to manage, and then a database here that you have to manage separately, just do it once, do it fast, and do it cost effectively. So you're taking advantage of things like atomic rights, and, or is that in the future roadmap, or how does that all work? So um, I sat down with, uh, actually in the very early days of the company, with the um, then CTO of, um, of uh, Fusion IO, uh, David Flynn, who I knew from a previous company, and, uh, and I said, uh, David, I know flash storage is going to be change the world databases, but I don't really know it. We had one of those 15 minute conversations where he took me through the entire internal architecture of Fusion IO, how the whole thing worked, and I said, hey, wait a minute, you have a key value store. You actually have an index database inside every single flashcard. There's a little database in there. Well, heck, I got a database too. I'm doing a database and you're doing a database, that's dumb. One of the best ways to get speed and efficiency is to collapse layers sitting right next to each other. So the insight out of that was that the way that disk is, um, is optimized, storage is accessed, is through sectors and blocks. There's no sectors and blocks here, right? There's chips and essentially a key value interface. So I said, well, hey, what, what if some number of years from now we all get together and we build an entirely new kernel interface for storage based on keys and values? And we all said, ha, 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 well that's great, let's go back to our lunch. Yeah, and then they went public. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and uh, we got our funding, and we went and rolled out to some great, very yeah. high velocity customers, and uh, time came for us to sit down when they were doing their most recent hardware rev, uh, rev the, uh, the Duo Drive 2s and the, the two solutions, and said, hey, let's build, let's build that dream. Let's actually build a key value interface for Flash, and let's tie it directly into the database. What new levels of efficiency can we get, both in terms of, uh, as a database developer, I can build a more atomic, more consistent solution uh, at a higher level of performance. So um, there's a, a whole trend that Fusion IO is doing a great job with, with these atomic memory operations. But we actually took a, a different direction. I think Fusion IO is really to be commended for um, this thought leadership of not just you know, doing it one way or doing something new, but really working with multiple companies in terms of bringing out some of the efficiencies and really driving 
some of the benefits that can be done out of Flash. Because, you know, uh, as I said to a VC a few years ago, uh, he said, well, you don't support rotational disk? And I said, yeah, we don't support paper tape either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so can you talk about, so that's great. Appreciate the, uh, the explanation. What does that mean uh, from a business value standpoint? Can you sort of net it out? What are your customers seeing? Faster, cheaper. Faster, cheaper. Well, more reliable too, but faster, cheaper. Can you quantify that in any way? I mean, in terms oh, sure. of bottom so, line productivity? Or? Um, well, what it's about in terms of a system architecture, like I said, is simplifying and doing more that you couldn't do before. Uh, for example, I was talking to a uh, company down in the uh, Wall Street area about uh, particular calculations that they do that also are very random. So I, I, this particular fairly large company, I said, look, you've got every database in the world. You've got Oracle, you've got Sybase, you've got all the old IMS stuff, you've got uh, Vertica, you've got everything. Why would you come to us and start talking about a new database? And the answer was, there are random access patterns in their calculations, what's called what-if scenarios, where you don't know what's going to happen. You need to game out various different strategies. That cannot be done with rotational disk or cache optimization strategies. You have to have a very random, very fast solution. So uh, what that means in terms of the bottom line of a business is, uh, let's take our advertising customers. Very cutthroat business, it's all about the amount of, the, the pennies that you shave on every transaction. With a, say, 25 server cluster, we're able to serve, say, 25% of the advertising load of North America. So if you can That's have amazing. that kind of bottom line business impact, why won't this or will this technology go mainstream? It would absolutely will. And it will. That's why it's, <laughs> that's why it's so, got another well, round of money. What are you going to ask me? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not going to go mainstream. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it's early. It, you know, it's, it's it it could be a nice niche. You know, it could be a nice fringe. But what you're describing is not fringe. It's the it's future. The demand. Of, well, well, no, he's saying it's random systems. now because they got a legacy installed base. And what he's what's happening is the random use case he's got is going to be the preferred architecture. Because that's going to be the where the cost drives down. Right. So that's I, what basically I, you're saying. Because exactly. right now I talked to a, I talked to one uh, several companies recently that have um, memcache tiers. So in memory DRAM memcache tiers with, uh, and they have uh, four to five terabytes of DRAM. So they bought they bought a lot of servers just in order to have a caching tier to make their database go fast. And we walk in and we and they say, well, we've got all these problems. I've got this whole ops team. We're supporting this. There are apps we can't build because we, you know, we have to keep expanding this tier and I can't put in you know, another, I can't double the size of that tier cost effectively, but what if I was using Flash and what if I didn't have to keep an entire database behind it? So uh, we believe, I believe, that we'll see many more applications using high velocity, fast data and we'll see new applications because of it, whether it's mobile, where people are doing new things constantly and moving around, uh, whether it's in the advertising space, the gaming space, we're talking about some gaming providers uh, who need to, they need to cut new ed, cut new games, right? And they need to uh, push the edge in terms of especially social, where sharding doesn't work. You can't just have some people over here and some people over here. Now everyone has to be linked together. There's a variety of places now where folks are doing things that they could never do before. I mean, you guys had some serious technical accomplishments under your belt, and with that I want to ask you, uh, did you lose your headset? Kian, can you help us out? Yeah. Um, so Dave, let's talk about the technology, obviously scaling, so I wanted to ask him, um, Oracle. I mean, that's some technical accomplishments we have there. In Oracle? No, no <laughs> Oracle is promoting yeah. massive scale, and he's on the cutting edge well, I think the, the point, Brian, you were making earlier is that essentially what Oracle's doing is saying they've taken their existing architecture and you know, jam Flash into it. And we saw that originally with storage array companies. Said, oh, I we're going to put this Flash into this storage array. And it worked okay, but it wasn't game changing. It wasn't an order of magnitude or two orders of magnitude performance improvement. Exactly, so I mean, part of Fusion IO's business, great business, is you take the Fusion IO card in and uh, whether it be MySQL or you know, standard Oracle or Rack, and hey, your database goes two to three times faster. Just magic pixie dust and a little bit of money and you just have to bottom line out whether that's worth it to you. Um, great, that's a factor of two, a factor of three, maybe a factor of four. What happens when you need to go 10 times faster, 100 times faster? What happens when you have to do multiple database lookups for every single ad served on the entire internet 
all out of you know, just a few servers. So, we put forth the premise that it's going to go mainstream, but there's got to be a tipping point, right? Because you're essentially talking about changing the way in which you write applications, or maybe rewriting existing applications, right? So that doesn't happen overnight. So, how long do you think it's going to take? I think we're probably still two to three years, minimum, as it's starting to be accepted. So, um, the leading edge is, I believe, gaming and also advertising. Uh, those are the folks who have the highest levels of load and also are in very vibrant competitive industries. Um, probably it will take in the order of five years for people like insurance companies who have to do fraud analysis um, and the companies that serve them to really start making even deeper and deeper use of uh, this kind of technology. Brian, I want to ask you to comment on Oracle's statements yesterday in the keynote. Larry Ellison was talking about all this performance with Exadata. Larry who? <laughs> <laughs> so what's your, I mean, you're in the, you're in the cutting edge of really in work that's going to be the future. And he's trying to co-opt the work that everyone's kind of doing. And see, he's overreaching. And I think there was a tweet that said you can get four times the performance with Fusion I.O. Someone tweeted, I think it might have been someone from Fusion I.O. So what did, what's your comments on Larry's current positioning on the tech involved? Well, I didn't see the keynote, I got to say. Um, what we really strive for is those 10x and 100x of performance. Um, and that does require new interfaces. And I got to say, I do like Oracle's uh, MySQL cluster product. Uh, we've seen it head-to-head -head competitively. We beat it every single time. But it's actually a very good product and I think does show Oracle validating the NoSQL space and realizing that there's, there's something to be had there. Um, it's, it's a great space. It is, you have to do something other than you know, throw some hardware at it. That's great for some old mainstream apps. Um, but uh, an Oracle Confluence for a long time has been an in-memory data store with user-defined functions that can be used for a uh, large variety of applications. Uh, of course, it's main memory, and they've, as far as I know, never done a flash integration. Um, prove me wrong, but um, Oracle actually has, besides its main uh, core database, uh, a large uh, history between times 10 uh, coherence and uh, MySQL cluster with the NDB engine uh, in NoSQL. So um, I welcome them to the party. Final question, we get a break on time. What's your plans for next year? What's the roadmap for you guys looking forward for the next year? Sure, so uh, we've done two things that we're very excited about. One is uh, last month we introduced Aerospike Community Edition. So that's a two server version, so folks can experience the power of um, flash storage as well as um, the, uh, the interfaces we propose, the speed, and also the reliability uh, in two server clusters. Um, so uh, we invite folks to be able to start their companies, start their businesses with uh, that level of scale. Um, we're starting to work with um, essentially um, high speed analytics and faster queries. So we believe that there is space uh, within the market uh, for queries that are still happening on real, in real time. They're on the front edge of the database, um, or they are analytics that have to be very, very fast, such as uh, financial services analytics, where you're changing second by second the algorithms that high, speed tra high frequency traders use. The very highest speed algorithms are at the low level, at the chip level, but every few seconds there are analytics that are done to switch the course of the boat. Um, there's a number of areas in there that we find fascinating that go beyond sort of the the, the simpler key value use case, um, and we'll be, uh, we're already in alpha and looking for customers in that area, pushing out some new technology. Brian Bulkowski, the CTO, founder of Aerospike, uh, part of a new generation company, congratulations. Uh, you know, we're seeing companies like Fusion IO go public, setting the agenda for the new infrastructure. You're part of that wave, congratulations. This is SiliconAngle.com's theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks, John. <laughs>